CID 19-201 A and B. All right, we're set for an arraignment. Uh, Mr. Budway, you're representing Mr. Carnell? That's correct, private counsel for Mr. Carnell. Um, in regards to the misdemeanor, John, we're going to plea of not guilty. In regards to the felonies, um, I've advised Mr. Carnell this right to have a preliminary hearing. He is choosing to waive that right to a preliminary hearing. We have signed time waivers. We're asking that all the charges of misdemeanors and felonies be bound over to Erie County Grand Jury for their consideration and bond be continued. All right, the prosecutor wishes to hear on this matter. Your Honor, with the waiver of the preliminary hearing, we do request that the bond be continued. Thank you. And I, I believe under Marcy's law, the alleged victims have been notified. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And they are present in the courtroom with counsel, Attorney Duff. Correct, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Carnow, I've been handed two documents that are both titled Waiver of uh, Preliminary Hearing. Is that your signature on both documents? Yes. You've read them over? Yes. Gone over them with your attorney? Yes. You understand what they mean? Yes. Uh, you're not waiving the trial. What you are waiving is a preliminary hearing. If we had a preliminary hearing that the prosecutor would have to establish two things. First, that the crimes were probably committed. Secondly, that you probably committed those crimes. Uh, no one could have made you testify at a preliminary hearing, and if you elected not to testify, that would not have been used against you. You're entitled to counsel, and obviously you retain state. Understanding these rights, are you asking me to waive the preliminary hearing? Yes. All right, I find that the waiver is voluntarily, intelligently entered into. The felony will be bound over to the Erie County Grand Jury for further proceedings. We'll send the misdemeanor with the felony. I do have proof of insurance, and we would continue the bond. Anything further from the prosecutor? Uh, Your Honor, Attorney Duff has indicated to me that the victim would like to make a statement to the court. Yeah, there's an arraignment. I don't see what's necessary, but... Mr. Duff? Your Honor, I believe they, address, they have a right under Marcy's law to address the court. Uh, let me see the... Yes, to I'm not sure. Your Honor, I think they would just like to make a statement regarding the disruption of their life due to the incidents involving the defendant. We're not going to object to that, Your Honor. Right. Over here. You want to step up here, please? <clears throat> what do you want, Judge? Right. The podium? Please. Ma'am, would you please state your name for the record? My name is Jennifer Haslitch. Go ahead, please. Um, I just want to say that this is very difficult. I mean, one minute our lives are intact, the next minute within a matter of five to seven minutes, not anything that we did, our house is wrecked into, our lives are torn up, we barely escaped not being encompassed by that explosion. We were even concerned for the gentleman to make sure that he was okay. And one of the things that I want to say in this court, because I have a really hard time with this, I don't understand how knowing the situation as what it was, how he could make a conscious decision to leave the scene of that, not knowing that the deputy would survive, my husband would survive, I would survive. Now with that being said, everybody survived. But it's, you know, how, how do, my home is gone, 20, our home is gone, 23 years. Everything within the home is gone. Our vehicles are gone. And now we're, we're challenged with trying to, to put the pieces together, even to somewhat lead a normal life. And I just have to say how challenging that is. And, you know, there's been, I don't feel that there's any remorse for what has been done. And I don't know where to begin. My husband and I don't know where to begin to pick up the pieces of our life. And believe me, I'm very 
extremely sympathetic with, with what everyone has said. Uh, let me explain a little bit of the process, and I'm sure your attorney has also. This is a municipal court who's been charged with felony. Uh, felonies uh, can start in a municipal court, but they cannot end in a municipal court. Uh, the matters have been bound over to the Erie County Grand Jury, which does handle felonies. And I'm sure you're going to be kept appraised of all the proceedings so that you can make uh, your feelings known throughout the process at the Erie County Common Pleas Court. But today, we're only here for the arraignment. He has the right to plead not guilty under a system, and he has entered a not guilty plea and waived the preliminary hearing. So the jurisdiction of the <coughs> court has ended. The case has been sent to Erie County Common Pleas Court. And again, I'm sure the prosecutor there will be in touch with you and keep you advised of the proceedings. Uh, again, I, I believe me, I'm sympathetic, but this is all we can do in this court. Anything further? Thank you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, anything further? No, Your Honor. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. No, Your Honor. Thank you. We'll be adjourned. we're going to be doing here. Oh, okay, so gotcha. or we'll get out of here right Okay. Here. And we do have arraignments starting at four. So. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we can take a hint. I mean the lobby we